Hey, what's going on ladies and gentlemen, I'm Duffy Duck here once again and I'm back for some more of yet again for the likes of the Maxi Toys videos. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for some more of Let's Play of Team Sonic Racing for the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, PC Steam versions and of course the Nintendo Switch. So last time we have managed to able to, well, fully concluded when it comes to the forms of chapter 1 and also we managed to able to tackle through some of those challenges in journey forms of chapter 2 and stuff like that. So today for this episode is the fact that we're also able to actually just wrap things up in terms of chapter 2 and then, and then eventually whenever we get on to the next chapter which should be chapter 3 then we can able to actually just to hopefully Trying to able to play as not only the different team, but also just trying to take on new forms in the next set of challenges along the way. So, in this case, let's get on to new forms of Team Grand Prix, which we have ourselves Ice Mountain, and Mother Canyon, Bingo Party, and Doctor's Mine. Or Doctor Mine, as far as I like to point it out. So, even then though, and also as far as you notice something, is the fact that, um... In between the forms of Mother's Canyon is the fact that it actually contains a mirrored version of that specific track, which yes, we'll discuss more about this until in any moment's notice, because for now, let's go ahead and play us, um, actually no matter what though, let's go for, um, yeah, I might as well go for Amy Rose for the time being with, well, Team Rose, obviously. So let's get to it with the first objective or the mission or challenge. Blaze, did Dadampa send you an invitation to his race? Yes. Apparently our enigmatic host is able to send messages across dimensions. Impressive. Distressingly impressive. He's got a lot of power, and I'm not sure about his motives. After everything I have dealt with, I feel confident that I can handle a mischievous old Tanuki. Don't underestimate him. There's more going on here than we can see. Okay, so let's go to it. And um, here we go on to the, the, another new track that we're actually going to be racing onto. And that is Ice Mountain. So we for wait though. And um, this segment might actually took a little bit more longer to able to actually just to, well, get onto the actual uh, challenge itself. Because you know how Grand Prix managed to able to re uh, retain... You know, four tracks in that particular challenge and stuff like that. Plus, there's going to be a lot of cinematics and all that stuff. So, either way, though, yeah, let's get to it with Ice Mountain, which appears to be kind of like a combination of a some sort of like a, uh, well, I don't know about you, but either way, though, it has been uh, quite a while since I actually played this, probably because of how the fact that, well, recently, that Piglet to still carry on doing, you know, Super Monkey Ball Jr. And also not to mention that uh, recently that Sonic and Piglet are also going to be doing Mario Party 10 as in new forms of the redo Let's Play for that specific game. So either way though, let's get to it with, uh, of course, the Ice Mountain stage as you can see. And looks like someone is playing Super Mario Maker 2. Which, uh, to be expected because of how the fact that they're going to be making some their own special themed worlds based off from the actual creations of some of the users throughout the world. So, either way though, oh man, the music, man. It's like a whole Oscar Day remix, which I think that's actually pretty cool. Especially noticeable how the fact that it has been uh, quite a long time since we have not actually heard Alaska Day uh, musical soundtrack as we've noticed from the actual well you you can definitely tell one whenever we get onto that specific yeah it's this bit right there on the music department where I was like oh, that feels very familiar it's actually based off from Alaska Day and Sonic Unleashed so that's pretty cool though it's especially noticeable how the fact that well I'm kind of glad that some of the uh, the soundtrack in this game is actually fully remixed in certain uh, tracks as far as I'm aware. So, either way though, that's that's kind of a cool thing as far as I can usually just noticing understandable reasons and stuff like that. So, anyway, let's go ahead and just, you know, keep on driving forward and hopefully we're not going to get ourselves screwed over for just about a few moments notice. So, either way though, let's just, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm really sorry about this point, folks. Um... Yeah, something's worth mentioning to talk about is the fact that recently 
Um, there's actually some new stuff has been happening in terms of the forms of, uh, let's just say in the LEGO Star Wars, the uh, Skywalker Saga for the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and I believe PC Steam and Nintendo Switch versions, is the fact that that particular game, well, despite the fact that it still hasn't got the release date yet, which I was expecting it will able to come out at some point in 2020, I was hoping for, but um, ultimately speaking, it's the fact that that particular game will able to contain 500 playable characters, which that's remarkably huge and big compared to the forms of how it does it in the complete saga back in the forms of 2007, despite the fact that, well, usually I've already adored um, LEGO Star Wars The Complete Saga to me though, at least specifically playing that game on the 360 version because of its controller and achievements and also just, well, pretty much anything else for this besides, well aside from the actual muted uh, voice actors and stuff like that. So, some people usually attempt to call the LEGO Star Wars um, the Skywalker Saga the ultimate uh, addition to the LEGO Star Wars video game, Probably because they're able to actually contain the majority of the characters based off from, you know, all nine uh, films in the entirety of the Star Wars saga. Which, either way though, that makes it pretty obvious for this fact. Now, I'm pretty sure that it might well able to contain the voiceovers this time around compared to the ones of how it does it in the complete saga that is pretty much mutant. So, even then, no, no, I'm still looking forward to able to actually just to see how that plays out. And I think I should probably might as well able to play that game on specifically the PlayStation 4 version because of its achievements or trophies as far as what that uh, version usually just calls it. So, even then, no, I'm not exactly sure if I was going to do a Let's Play of that game, probably because of two things. Number one, that it will take a long time to able to 100% for everything. And second is the fact that the wo the way you're able to actually just to uh, say Lego or something like that, this means about the fact that we know with the we still need to cope with the forms of the copper rule system. So this means is the fact that whenever you say Lego name, then otherwise the copper thing will say like, oh man, this video is made for kids or something. Which either way, though, I'm probably not gonna do that just yet, though. Well, I don't know what I really mentioned about this right now just because then again it has been a couple of days since I actually managed to discuss on certain things and stuff like that well despite the fact that since Wednesday so either way though that's all I can really say here so anyway so far so good and now let's move on to Mother's Canyon once again except now that uh, we're about to be on to the mirrored version of that track which yes much like in Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transformed, and the majority of the Mario Kart games for sure, that uh, once again we're going to have to go for the actual mirrored versions of the tracks themselves, so even this case, oh, that effect looks very familiar, it actually feels remarkably similar to the ones in Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transformed, where it basically just uh, shows us or tells us the mirrored track, and as a result it just goes all completely happen, so... Yeah, it plays out very similar in terms of between these tracks in particular, except now it's all completely flipped and everything. So, either way though, that's to be expected by this point in terms of more accurately difficulty progressions or anything like that. Even especially noticeable that it feels remarkably uh, similar to the ones in the mirrored uh, track variations in Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transformed. And especially noticeable with... Uh, Mario Kart 64, Double Dash, and especially noticeable in the future Mario Kart games beyond. Although the only time exception is of course Mario Kart Tour. Speaking of Mario Kart Tour actually, it's the fact that recently in two days ago, that I'm assuming that I've not actually talked about this, that recently the Mario Kart Tour, uh, the new tour has been added, with the, uh, has been newly added, well I don't know how do I truly explain this right about now, just because of how the fact that, well, it has been quite a while since I actually uh, discussed on all things and such, so I must admit that right away I do apologize for that, so... <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, because of that, though, they got themselves a brand new tour into our um, hands, which appears to be body forms of, of course, the Flower Tour. And what does it contain something new in that tour? Well, I'll tell you about three number of things, actually. 
Uh, first of all, the new playable characters has been added to the roster, such as, of course, uh, the new uh, incarnation of Daisy, which this time around, though, she's actually a fairy. Which, to be fair, because of how the fact that well, I just don't know why I'm truly saying this right, but even then, though, that it seems just kind of cool to see uh, Daisy in a fairy outfit and stuff like that, trying to represent the spring and stuff. Because, uh, usually, relatively speaking, today's day is the forms of uh, the 8th of May today, in this case in 2020. So, in this case, though, that it might be still spring as it is, and I think this will be actually be the last month to able to actually just to bring spring to the table. And then, what if we get on to the forms of June next month, and especially noticeable for July and August, then it will be time for summer. Although, to be fair, that, uh... Well, I don't know if there's any enough enough else time to able to celebrate uh, summer as it is for the sake of this year because of you know the coronavirus uh, pandemic, which is usually it's kind of like the disastrous thing has been happening. So anyway, enough about that. And also, they actually bring us into ourselves another new playable character into the roster in, uh, in Mario Kart Tour, which appears to be uh, Monty Mall, which. Even then though, if you thought about the fact that Hammer Bro was actually new into the, in terms of the new racers department, well, be prepared for yourselves, folks, because Monty Mall, he's now finally joined in to the Mario Kart game. Because, uh, it kind of feels kind of like a similar thing for how it does in the forms of, uh, I would say in Super Mario Party, that, uh, since that Hammer Bro does make his second appearance in terms of playable characters departments in the Mario Party games, and then Monty Mall will be this first ever playable debut, joining forms of Super Mario Party. I mean, what's next? Uh, would say Boo or Goomba for that matter, or even uh, Boom Boom or Pom Pom or anything like that. That again, it could be a possibility. It could be a possibility. Or even Kemic as a result for that too. Well, despite the fact that Kemic was actually a host, Journey forms of in Mario uh, Super Mario Party. So along with uh, Toad and Toadette and stuff like that. So even that, uh, we could be. Well, God knows that the possibilities will could be endless, though. It could be a possibility endlessness, so... Anyways, let's go ahead and claim first place here, even though despite the fact that Big the Cat was actually in, uh... Sadly in seventh place, so... Even then, uh, we can able to still rank up some more points here and there, but, uh, either way, though, sometimes, though, some, some certain challenges in this game can get pretty obnox- nauseating, especially noticeable with you know, daredevil challenges though, but then again, well, four things down until when, what if we get on to the later chapters throughout, so either way though, because I'm not a big fan of, uh, daredevil challenges, because it's, it's kind of difficult actually, but anyway, let's go ahead and move on to the next track, which appears to be Bingo Party, which again is another returning track based off from the forms of Sonic and Sega All Stars Racing, so even then are we glad to see uh, Bingo Party is now joining in to the forms of, well, this time for the HD, uh, gorgeous visuals and stuff. So, even then, though, as far as so some specific changes in terms of this track in general compared to the original, I think it's pretty obvious they actually did have some number of changes. Like, for instance, that, uh, well, we'll get to that until one if we, uh, hopefully we can able to come to one. But either way, though, we'll just go ahead and just, you know, keep on getting some skin boosts or anything like that, or even slingshots as a result. So, yeah, for that particular trick right there, uh, we, we no longer get out to worry about, like, falling off or anything like that. And also, what if we get on to, uh, this little tunnel part that is usually coming up until later? Uh, somehow, though, we managed to able to actually just to drive on to the actual... Uh, the platform this time around. Well, not so much around here, but if we manage to able to get inside during the forms of this particular area right there, then, yeah, we actually have no longer good able to actually just to worry about just fly all the way to the other side of a hole, unlike the original. Plus, I've noticed they're, uh, they're no longer gonna bring some strings to the table on this particular segment here, just because of how the fact that, well, the only time they do have strings is, of course, certain tracks like Whale Lagoon, as well as, uh, you know, Mother's Canyon, and all that stuff, so even that I was one point out, so. And I suppose the final thing I should probably mention in terms of the forms of their brand new 
uh, update in all this case a brand new tour for Mario Kart Tour recently. Yes, they've now managed to able to get ourselves our brand new track to the table, although it's more accurately a new remix track, which this time around is actually Remix Choco Island 1. So I was like, I was cool with that, but either way though, it might be seems a little bit more simple in terms of that specific track itself, because all it gets is just basically it's like a, a few simple straight lines and some occasional uh, trick ramps every once in a while, but nothing to be home right to home about though, but uh, at least I'm glad to able to actually fully experience that particular stage again, or in this case just trying to able to experience the new remake stage since Mario Circuit 1, and as a result though, that I'm very happy about that, so, well, a little bit, despite what the forms of I just keep on getting owned by a lot of items, potentially, in Mario Kart Tour, just because of how the fact that despite the, uh, the item system in Mario Kart Tour is just so bad, in my opinion, because of how the fact that it's all depending on luck, really, because of how the fact that I was expecting if I was going to able to defend myself or something like that. But nope, everything else is all due to luck, really. Due to the actual item slots or the frenzy system. But either way though, that we'll talk more about it on that game. Whatever when the one year has been passed until September or something. But either way though, you'll probably know what I'm talking about. But anyway, so let's go ahead and... Uh, Keep on driving forward, and um, hopefully we would be able to have no issues potentially. Even though, despite the fact that Omo Chow or even Chow, as a result, might be actually becoming seventh place. So as a result, yeah, this can be feels a bit remarkably similar to uh, the previous activity, which appears to be, of course, uh, or in this case, the previous track, which is of course Mother's Canyon. So even then, I was like. Ah, uh, whatever. At least we've still got enough points as it is, so... Anyway, so let's get ourselves some more uh, credits as far as the actual in-game currency and stuff like that. Uh, by the way, something's worth mentioning too is the fact that, as you saw, whenever we get onto the character selection screen as Sonic and stuff like that, that's how uh, we actually got ourselves one of our card parts changed into a different cosmetic change, which is specifically has like a golden part of a car, and uh, that way you can able to actually unlock certain card parts during the forms of that specific uh, mod parts, in this case the actual capsule machine, which uh, in order to be able to get those uh, items potentially, even including some card parts, that um, you have to spend on 10 of those credits. So as a result, yeah, it will be something's worth mentioning in terms of replayability, and also because of how the fact that you can also just manage to get yourself some special items along the way if you're having a hard time with the actual main uh, game itself, which I probably should be able to use that until when it gets to the point until uh, the middle portion of Team Adventure mode. So even then, I will probably point it out whenever we get onto that specific stuff. So, but anyways, now let's move on to the forms of. Uh, you know, the final track in terms of this particular Grand Prix itself, which appears to be, of course, Doctor's Mind. So hopefully we should be able to actually just to classify for able to just hopefully try to win, basically, except the fact that sometimes that, you know, sometimes uh, any other team, although it won't be so bad in terms of the forms of uh, uh, the team of two or something like that, or even in this case, uh, the when it has like two teams, or even especially for three teams, but what if we get onto the forms of uh, the later portion of this Let's Play? Ah, oh, seriously? Stupid saw blades. Ah, oh well, whatever. And for whatever reason, whenever I manage to play with my GameCube controller sometimes, whenever I'm doing some of those uh, acceleration fronts, I swear to God, that's most of the, most of the time my R button doesn't seem to work with me half the time, which I was like. That seems very underwhelming. In fact, until whenever we get on to the next uh, few parts worth noting for, I'm actually going to be able to switching between... Um, I'm actually going to be able to utilize the, uh, the Switch Pro controller instead, because that way, not only does it make everything a little bit more comfortable to hold, but also just try not to worry about the forms of uh, holding down the R button this whole time on my GameCube controller, because, ow, my finger starts to get really, really hurt after every once in a while, though, but even then, uh, that, that usually happens the same thing in terms of likely, uh, 
the original Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing and Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transforms. At least it doesn't bother me that much though because the Xbox 360 controller does feel quite natural for this part. So even then I would expect it that much. Even then I would expect if I was going to get myself the Xbox One version of the game to make things a little bit more superior than the ones and how it does it on the, uh, the any other versions of the game for that matter. But either way though still, I still haven't got myself my Xbox One. And plus I found it's a little bit more redundant to able to get uh, pretty much the same version as the other versions, all except with uh, the control types you'd be using, so... That's my kind of theory right there, and uh, all the other jazz. Although I would like to able to actually just to get the Xbox One Sonic the Hedgehog games for that matter, because those games are considerably much more cheaper now to able to get, especially consists of Sonic Forces and stuff like that. But then again though, I'm probably not going to get the Xbox One at the end of the day, because, well... I just don't feel like trying to get that. I know that might actually really upset the in terms of the actual Microsoft fans, which I know it's down to their opinion, but I do have my opinions as well. I mean, everyone else is different nonetheless. So either way though, let's just go ahead and uh, try to pull off some tricks on that part. And hopefully we're not going to mess things up beyond belief, despite the fact that we just keep on getting owned by that stupid saw blade. But thankfully, that's... No longer the case this time, so either way though, well, just, uh, go ahead and, uh, who used the, uh, the ultimate team right here? Um, I suppose I should probably find out and drain out some form or another. Oh, isn't that? Oh, that's Blaze, okay. Alright. Okay, I'm fine with, but hey, at least we've managed to done the forms of the entire Grand Prix on this particular challenge. All for the sake of the forms of those random uh, kind of stuff we can able to do for this part, so... But there we go, folks. That's pretty much about it in terms of the Grand Prix uh, mission here. So even that though, and of course we're not exactly done with Chapter 2 just yet though, because otherwise there might be still more to come. Specifically, uh, in terms of the, uh, I would say the last challenge we might actually do in Chapter 2, and then we move on to Chapter 3 for sure. Well, well, well. It would appear that the gang's all here. I can't wait to throw a wrench into their plan. You left the wrench here, boss, along with the rest of your tools. You're a special kind of idiot, Cubot. Yay! I'm special. And sure enough, we're able to meet up with Dr. Eggman for sure. So either way, let's get ourselves our only star in this for that particular objective, and also another key for the sake of, like, God knows. But anyways, now let's move on to the final objective, or the final challenge, in the forms of in Chapter 2, and that is, of course, the survival race. And this time around, it's going to take place in Lost Powers. So either way, though, for the sake of clarity, let's go for... Um, let's go for a child racer instead, so either way, let's get to it. And that's about the long and short of it. That's some pretty helpful info. Now, we just have to figure out what our next move is. Hey, what's going on here? What are you two sneaking around talking about? You guys aren't even on the same team. Oh, hey, Knuckles. We were just, uh, talking about the, uh... The weather! It's sunny. There! Done! By the way, where's the rest of your detective agency, Vector? Espio and Charmy, why aren't you guys a team? Uh, I'm out here freelancing. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Trying to make a little extra coin. Okay, but remember, I'm watching you. No funny business. Alright, so let's get to it with, uh, of course, the survival race, and hopefully we should be able to kick um, some racers' butts, no matter what. And hopefully we should be able to move on to um, Chapter 3 as well, as I said this countless amount of times before. So, either way, though, let's get this thing started. So, yeah, I'm pretty pumped for that, and especially noticeable how the fact that most people seem to... Well, I don't know how do I explain this right about now, just because, well... Not much else to talk about, apart from, you know, the LEGO Star Wars, the, uh, 
the Skywalker Saga, which I'm super excited about still. Even though I'm the only thing I'm most likely going to wait for for every now and then is of course the final release date for that. But of course it might take a bit of a little bit longer to able to actually get that game sorted because of that stupid coronavirus thing situation. But either way though, I'm still going to be able to keep on on about with the forms of that negativity effect. So even then though, I just want to point it out right away. Just because, you know, the the year itself has gone pretty bad bones, as you guys should already know. And also another thing I did want uh, to talk about as well, that, uh, yes, the UK version of Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition, specifically, uh, they actually did announce there was actually a, uh, a story trailer, it means that includes, uh, you know, some story cutscenes from the original game and stuff like that, but in a remastered visuals and stuff like that. And also, they actually brings us to the forms of, uh, some familiar new scenes based off from future connected um Alberlock episode which even then though it does look pretty cool and i'm still looking forward to it though and speaking of which actually is the fact that i'm pretty sure we've actually only got about uh three more weeks left until that game will about to be coming out and join at some point in 29th of may in uh 2020. Now, of course, since as you probably want to know what that's going to happen in any forms of that specific day and beyond, that um, eventually at this point, whenever we get on to, uh, let's say on the 18th of May, that um, I'm also able to actually get back onto Donkey Kong Jungle Beat, and I believe Tiana is also going to be coming back onto that game as well. And eventually at this point too, that um, Tiana might also go back onto Kirby's Return to Dreamland at some point in Journey Forms of, well, what I would say in the 19th of May, I'm pursuing for this matter, if I manage to able to double check on the calendar and stuff, which. Yep, it's the 19th of May that she will definitely gonna come back onto that game, so... Hopefully though, without any sort of hesitations, or even especially noticeable with the, any, uh, the lack of delay or anything like that, even though she was still progressing, uh, still has a lot of progressioning into the forms of the extra mode, for sure, even though it might actually took her a long time to able to actually just, uh, completely done with certain stuff every once in a while, so... Oh yeah, by the way, with that particular uh, Team Ultimate, when it comes to the forms of the Chow Racer, uh, that particular background theme is actually a remix of, uh, specifically the Chow Race theme from Sonic Adventure 2. Just because I pretty much recognize the actual jingle or anything like that. So, even though there's not much else to say, so... Anyways, now let's move on to the final lap we go, and hopefully we should be able to... Oh, seriously? Big is now annihilated, so it's just now between uh, both Amy and us at the moment, so... Or Chow, I should say. So either way, though, we'll hopefully try to figure out some strategies involved, like, you know, just keep on passing a different item to our teammates and stuff. So either way, though, we could expect we can able to actually just to do and go ahead and... Uh, do some other things in particular, so... But I digress. So anyway, so let's go ahead and keep on drifting along here, and eventually we'll able to go ahead and uh, just keep on pulling off some tricks like this. So, um, I suppose another thing I was wanted pointing out right away is the fact that, um, you know when I used to have, uh, Mortal Kombat Armageddon on the Nintendo Wii version? Well, sadly to tell you for this point, guys, I no longer have that version of the game. I've no idea what it is, it's most likely because I had a bit of a struggle to able to insert the actual combat uh, code in, where like every time you go into a new mode or something like that. I think for now on for me though, I think I might actually trying to get the PlayStation 2 version, just because, well despite the fact that the PlayStation 2 version doesn't have the exclusive playable character, unlike the Wii version does have, but uh, ultimately speaking is the fact that well, in terms of fighting games and stuff like that, even for 2D fighting games, it's actually really good in terms of PlayStation controllers and stuff like that to me though, just because, well obviously because if you have the directional pad with you, that also means it's the fact that if you're trying to pull off some combos, or even especially noticeable with all these special moves and all the other jazz, that uh, it might be pretty easy to pull off, especially in the the PlayStation controllers and stuff like that, you know? So even that though, to me though, that makes it a little bit obvious. Even though I was gonna play that game with the Wii's classic controller, but, you know. Knuckles said you were being sneaky or something. Is that true? Maybe just a little. I'm working on something. 
Say no more. That's good enough for me. You'll tell me what I need to know. You got that right, Sonic. Great. Now let's go find us another race to win. And straight off the bat is the fact that not only do we get ourselves the only star, but sadly we didn't get the key. But regardless of such, we've now actually access to another team, which appears to be, I would say, Team Silver, as far as our more pointing things out right away. So and now here we go, on to Chapter 3, and the Chapter 3 is called, Guess Who's Back? So either way though, let's get to it with, I might as well do one more uh, mission for now one, which is of course Team Race. And for the sake of clarity, we'll go ahead and select um, Blaze the Cat to start off with. And she's actually a speed type, and Silver was actually a technique type, and Vector the Crocodile was obviously the power type, just like the ones in Sonic Heroes. There is only one thing that could improve this affair. More racers. Team Eggman is joining the contest. Hello all. Miss me? Eggman, I knew it. You're the one behind all this. Oh, please. I'm here to race the same as you. Except unlike you, my team are the only ones who are unstoppable. You've never been unstoppable, Eggman. In fact, you're very stoppable. And now these fellows are here as well. Oh, excellent, excellent. Let the race commence. Ah, I wish the boss had let us race with him instead of letting those egg pawns be on his team. Yes, but we have a list of duties to perform here while the boss is away. That's right! We need to maintain the power levels of the boss's vegetable garden and water the unstable energy core! I think you read the list backwards. I can't read at all! Something's worth mentioning also is the fact that if you saw um, the Team Sonic Racing Triggered video by Nathaniel Bandy, which I think that's the YouTube channel you should definitely recommend you subscribe to him to for this point, guys. And because of that, he points things out is the fact that in certain cutscenes in um, Team Sonic Racing, that wishing sound effects every time when characters usually speak and during text boxes and stuff like that, so that particular <laughs> sound effects does get pretty annoying and just kind of out of place in terms of cutscenes departments because as a result, it does feel distracting. So even then, I just kind of prefer the ones that usually how... Usually in Sonic Rivals 2, doesn't seem to have that particular sound effect or anything like that. But in terms of Team Sonic Racing, they tend to do that all the time. Whenever when the characters manage to speak, so... That seems a little bit out of place right here, so... Anyway, so let's get to it. Any forms of Frozen Junkyard, which appears to be by the forms of a new stage environment where we can able to drive around in. And I think, fundamentally speaking, this is the second snow-themed level that we can able to drive through. So, yeah, because as a result of that kinds of stuff, yeah, that's what I can say. And also, as you can tell, it's the fact that Dr. Eggman is now joining into the race. And as a result, he got himself his egg pawns, and especially noticeable with just Eggman himself. So, because of that, uh, because of that though, originally that, uh, this game was supposed to have egg pawns as playable characters, but somehow it wasn't. So as a result, even though originally they did try to mention about the fact that egg pawns will be the first time ever in the Sonic universe, they're able to actually make them become playable. But that's no longer the case in the final release of the game, sadly. Although it's kind of a shame, because we like to try out about the fact that what these egg pawns usually does. Oh, remember those little robot stuff from the likes of Sonic Forces? You know, with these uh, defect robots like these? Well, they are back, except now they actually become a stage hazard, so... Something's worth talking about because this game did came out after Sonic Mania Plus DLC expansion, so even then, oh, and before God knows, although aside from uh, Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games Tokyo 2020, but aside from the next major Sonic game, well, to be honest with you, there's not much else we can usually just try to speak of because, again, the coronavirus thing has been conquering its all, so as a result, that because they actually just keep on delaying certain of those Sonic announcements, which 
Again, it's kind of sad just because of how the fact that I love to see what uh, was going to be up next for Sonic and Journey Forms of 2020. Well, aside, we still got ourselves the movie out of it. So even then, though, I'm sure Sonic will be able to mention it more more about it until whenever when uh, you know both Sonic and Piglet will definitely come back onto Mario Party 10. So as a result, yeah. So guys, let's get uh, the red flame as far as we can able to actually just to occasionally use it, but most of the time we're just gonna have to save up the actual team blast move or the team ultimate boost, so we can able to actually just to boost to win for victory ness, I suppose. So yeah, we're able to actually just to commence it with that such. Speaking of such though, it's the fact that this game. Well, to be more specifically, but you notice how the fact that we couldn't seem to... Well, you notice the new forms of that one particular cutscene where basically Knuckles did actually mention to Vector about the fact that where's Chimey, B, and Espio, part of the Team Chaotix, that um, he did point it out is the fact that, well, unfortunately though, Espio and Chimey B was uh, no longer going to be part of that particular team. So instead, they kind of felt like... You know, trying to place in Silver and Blaze, which even I know I might be okay with, but then again, though, it always kind of reminds me of uh, Sonic Free Riders when it comes to forms of having Factor on the opposite team. Like, you know, with Team Rose in Sonic Free Riders, that Factor the Crocodile was actually joining in with Amy and Cream. So, yeah, that seems kind of weird for him anyway, though. But anyway, oh, that particular music theme, whenever you use. Blaze's uh, team ultimate boost, and that particular theme right there is actually a representing a reference or a remix of one of the boss battle theme in terms of the forms of uh, in Sonic Rush. When if you go on to Deadline um, level in terms of the actual boss fight, when you have a one on one confrontation or one on one duel fight against with either Sil uh, Sonic and Blaze, well, depending on what characters you'd be selecting. So, even though uh, it does kind of remind me of that specific stuff, because, you know, Blaze was the opposite Sonic, and she obviously collects uh, um, opposite Chaos Emeralds, known as the Soul Emeralds, and she actually fight against with the opposite um, Eggman, called Eggman Neka, and she was a princess from a Soul Dimension, so it's pretty obvious for that little um, artifact and all that stuff. And I'm sure most people seem to already know about this, ever since you, if you guys played you know, Sonic Rush on the DS, so even then though, speaking of Blaze the Cat actually, she almost become 15 years old since when Sonic Rush made her playable debut, which even then though, I can't even believe that uh, it's been 15 years since we actually saw her first appearance of um, Blaze the Cat, so pretty cool though, despite with her absence of you know, Sonic Forces and stuff like that, but either way though, yeah, that's far as I can say. So yeah, we did manage to win after all, so even that now, that's as far as we can able to talk about. The fact that Eggman is here has me worried. Yeah, he could be working with Dodonpa. If the two of them even know each other, that is. Yeah, it's a mystery. I wonder if Shadow knows anything. He'd work with Eggman if it meant getting what he wanted. I think I'll have a little chat with him. Okay, so speaking of which, actually, it's the fact that I've, I'm afraid to tell you for this point, guys, is that I'm going to have to end this video off just about right here. So join me next time on Let's Play Team Sonic Racing. It's the fact that we are still about to be continuing things on in Chapter 3 to take on some more challenges and all the other jazz and hopefully collect some more stars along the way too. So yeah, see you guys until our next Monday. Later, fellas. See you guys then.